feel God in here. I'm not hearing. You don't have sub in your phone. Come on. Read it for me now. Yes. To place in a different position. Wait, just small, small. To place in a different position. It means you have been at some place, but now they're moving you away from there to somewhere else. Who is catching the groove? <laughs> You're feeling it. You are at some place, but you are leaving that place this week. Say this week. Maybe your position earlier was lack, but you're moving from that address to another address of abundance. Maybe the position was sickness, but something is going to happen to you in this week that will move you from there to someone else. What other word is that? To adjust or alter the position of someone. Adjust. Tell your neighbor, adjust. Say adjust, adjust, adjust. You may not understand this, but let me give you a good example. It's like when you, you have a dish, they come to fix a dish for you. Just a slight shift from that dish will make the signal not to be clear. You may not even receive the signal. All the signals are there, but you're not catching it. Just because a slight shift from position. Sometimes you may even be like maybe you're in a place and sun is beating you or, or, or rain is falling and what you just need is just a slight adjustment and you will align. I prophesy to you this week just slight. Some of you that's what you need. Just a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. There is a force of resurrection. Some people are already catching what I'm saying. A little. God will shift you just a little for you to be in a place where what you're looking for will meet you. Amen. Amen. You will no longer miss the signal. It's not just for you, but for us as a church. This seventh year is a year of repositioning. I know it like I know the back of my hands. I can feel it. That things will never be the same. If you think you have seen success, you are about to see something that is even better than what you have seen. Let your amen be louder. Everything I'm telling you is prophetic. Think you have seen favor. Something bigger than that is coming. Adjustment. Altering. Just adjust a little bit. Do you know it is just the smallest of salt that makes the food become salty? Just a small one. Just a small one. You can take one full sachet of salt and put it inside the food and yet you never catch. Just a small one. Have you ever been eating and you know this small rice that is remaining in this plate, if I eat it, <laughs> is the smallest of rice. But if I eat it, you are looking at the rice, the rice is looking at you. Your spirit is telling you, don't do it. This will be the smallest of rice. <laughs> you are looking at it. It hasn't happened to you before. At this time, you're already breathing from your nose and from your ears everywhere. And something is telling you, the food is so sweet, something is telling you, eat it, something is telling you, don't. That just one spoon. It may look so insignificant. But that insignificant thing to you, God is going to do it for you this week. 
I don't, I don't know why you are not understanding this thing. I don't know why you are not understanding this thing. It doesn't take much. Just one encounter. Just one breakthrough. Just one phone call. Just one message. That's all it takes. And you arrive at the place called there. May that become your experience in the name of Jesus. What other, what other word is there? The process of changing the perception of a product or service. The process of changing. The process of becoming rich. The process of becoming prosperous. The process of promotion. It begins today. Amen. Every time God fixes a program for his people, he's about to do something. Every time. We don't just fix program for fix. Look at the way these programs just fall in place. Reverend James was telling me, say, it is you that God told that this year is a year of decoration and enthronement. And everything is falling in place. Look at after now, we'll get into the oil of promotion conference. Are you not feeling it? Are you not feeling it? From praying in the spirit to God repositioning and altering things in your life to God promoting you. Are you not feeling it? Everything is moving in sequence. I say your life can never be the same. You believe it, you shout a better amen. Your perceptions are being changed. Most times that's the hardest. I spent years fighting the notion that I came from a cost home. It took me years. There was no witch holding my hand. But there's this perception. I grew up and I met it. Every time they told us, the family, what the forefathers did. What the forefathers did. I grew up with that mentality. That even when I want to take any step, I first of all think what the forefather did. It will not work. See, there are people that may be sitting here or listening to me online and they believe they will never make it. It doesn't matter what you do for them. They already have it at the back of their mind that whatever they do will, will fail. The biggest battle of your life is in your mind. Changing your perception about things. That's the biggest. And God is saying, this one week, I'm going to alter it. Believe me, God has given me words. So many things I'm going to speak to you on. One of them is opportunity. See, you don't want to miss any day. Your perception will be altered in the name of Jesus. Your amen is lying on the ground. You will leave this conference knowing that it's possible and it's doable. You didn't hear me. Please, I'm preaching better than you are receiving. You will leave and you will know it's possible, it's doable in the name of Jesus. I don't believe in impossibility. I believe everything can be done. And I wasn't always like that. You will leave here believing my marriage can be sweet. You will leave here believing that I can be somebody. You will leave here believing that I have, I have the added advantage. I have the upper hand. I'm going to read a short story for you. And then we're ready to go. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. We're laying the foundation today. Tomorrow we'll continue. It talks about the story of four lepers. How many of you have ever seen a leper before? You have seen a leper before? Let me see your hands up. You haven't seen a leper before? How many of you have been to Lagos? Okay, only one person. How many of you have been to Lagos? Is it by air or by, by ground? By trek. <laughs> okay. So... By trek or by land? By land. How come you didn't see any leper while you were going to Lagos? Oh, now I know. You are part of those that sleep when you travel, so you don't see nothing. If you get to Benin, a little after Benin, where is that place they have uh, that school? Uh, so once you're along that area, you just pass Benin and be going... Or Kada, you're going. You see some men by the road, some women by the road, they cover their head and everything, and they stay somewhere and they are begging. You have never seen those people. Look at them very well. Those are lepers. 
you check them, they don't have fingers. Some of them don't have single fingers. They have two fingers. They have three, or they don't have that. That's, that's what the, yes, their hand is like this. You know exactly. That's what leprosy does to a man. So we're about to read the story of four lepers, men who were disadvantaged from every natural point of view and what God did concerning them. Let's read from verse 3. From verse 3. Please let someone that will be fast be there because we need to move as we are reading. Everybody read one to go. Now that we have four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. Notice that they have no name. Anytime the scripture is describing some people and doesn't give them name, it means there's just nothing about them that should be taken of note. For instance, the woman of the issue of blood. They are defined by their problem. Eh? Just defined by that. Not that they didn't have name, but their problem has taken over their name. The woman of the issue of blood. The blind. They even do the pity and put in them. Bartimaeus. The four lepers. The crippled man by the gate. Uh, the man by the put up. So, so these guys, they don't have, not that they don't have name, but circumstances have taken over. You don't know that brother for church. Which one? The one where you shoot a sway to God. One just want to tell you something. Where did you be like that sister for church? Which one? No, no, that sister. They won't call you by name. They just look for whatever your problem is. But you say, don't you know that brother? I want wait always. They always they beg for transport. Now you don't know that. Oh, that brother they beg for transport. I know him. I know. What's going to happen? Don't you know that woman? Which one? That one that is barren now. Don't you know that guy? Which guy? The one that is homeless. In the great house. Don't you know that student? Which student? That one where he tries to come up. Jump. Whatever has defined you, that is not the name that God has given you. If I be a man of God, I stand on this altar. And I declare that Jehovah will alter it in this one way. Let your amen be louder. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance. Of, you already tell you, say, these men are not. How many of you have watched half and, uh, there's one movie they call half and two or half something. Eh? Two and half men. Yes, two and half men. So, even though they are men, but the first description is telling us these are not, there is something wrong about these men. They are leprous men, and they are at the entrance of the gates. Say, so this is a position. This is where you will always find them. You don't need to look for them. Just go to the entrance of the gate. You will see four leprous men. That is where they were permitted to stay. This place is a place of arms. A place where they beg. But let me even tell you a little history about Israel and leprous men. Leprous men are not allowed to associate with other normal human beings. They are not allowed to mingle with other human beings because their disease is seen as a defilement. If you see them, you wash your eyes and your face. If they pass you, you wash your body quickly. If they touch anything, you don't touch it. Where they pass, you don't pass. Where they sit, you don't sit. If they are even coming, by law, they are supposed to have a big bell. As they are coming, they are ringing it. Bram, bram, they are shouting, unclean, unclean, so that you can take cover and leave the way for them. What a life to live. I don't know what your own life is, but this week, there will be an altering. So this is 
the place they ought to be, they ought to remember. So there they were, just like every other day. But this day, something was about to change in their life. They woke up thinking it was like every other day. But this day, they were about to have an encounter that would change their testimony. Here they were poor, rejected by men, not accepted and not approved by the community, by the society. They are written off, rejected by family and by everyone. So they are here waiting till they die because the, 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 the law by God is that even if these guys for any reason will be healed, and it's not likely they will be healed. If they will be healed, they will have to go to the priest to check them out and confirm that they are truly healed. And some sacrifices will be done. So there was no possibility of them becoming anything. No advantage whatsoever. This sickness has destroyed their fingers. They can't even walk. It has destroyed their toes. They can't even walk well. And he's eating the whole body and he's going. The poverty has eaten deep. Oh, you know. The sickness has gone far. The shame, the rejection. Please keep playing that stuff and enjoying it. It has eaten deep. The rejection has eaten deep. You're asking, why is it that nobody likes me? Why is it that everything I do, I do don't work? How come everything works for everybody? It never works for me. How come I labor and nothing good comes out of it? Why am I born from this family? Oh, there are times I, I did that. I was crying. God, why did you, why did I have to, from this family? Why did I have to come out from this family? No uncle, nobody, nobody is rich. Why wasn't I born in other families? I keep saying, why me, why me? Why did my father have to die early? Oh, many nights I cried. Even as a grown-up. I remember, well, I've told the guy's story one day. One night, I was, I was lying down thinking about my life. Nothing was working. No light, no nepa, no fridge, no money, no clothes, no car, no house rent, no nothing. We just stay in our house and we're seeing everybody's generator running and we don't have one. My children remember the other day when we have to take turns to fan the children till daybreak. As you're fanning, you're killing mosquito. I just remember that your box. You remember that tear tear box? Where you put some of your clothes. Many times it was it was my pillow when we lie down on the ground. Water everywhere. This is not that water, but this heat. Many times I will come out and I will stay out and I'm looking out from the, 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 the guard or whatever you call it. I'm saying, God, what is this? How did I get here? How did I find myself here? One of such nights I was thinking and they started playing. I was listening to Crown FM and they started start playing a song. Once when I was a child, dance with my father. And I remembered my father. Why do you have to die early? Why? And I was shedding tears. My daddy. Daddy! Where are you, daddy? Tears were running. Hot tears. <sighs> have you ever shed hot tears? It's so hot. It's so warm. It's coming down uncontrollably. I was just, I just surrendered myself to weep. To tears. That was all I could do. While I was weeping in the night, dead of the night, my wife heard my voice from the other side. And I saw her stand up. She was coming to find out what was going on and quickly clean up everywhere. And then she came and said, I just heard somebody crying. I said, Not me. Not even seeing how any hope is going to come from anywhere. There is nowhere. But listen, if it began one day, it will end one day. 
this was going to be that day for these guys, the four leprous guys. And so they come out. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? This is where we are used to. We should make a change. Let's reposition ourselves. <laughs> let's reposition ourselves. We've been going through this for a long time. Let's, let's move. Let's not give up on faith and say, well, let's not throw in the towel. Let's change. They say, if we, if we say, let's enter the city, there is a hunger in the city. And of course, the people will not allow us to come into the city. And we will die there. But if we still sit here, we will die also. So let's make some moves. Tell your neighbor, move. Take your neighbor, move. Tell your neighbor, move. You need to move in your mind. You need to move. You need to move. You need to move. Say now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. What I'm trying to bring out to you here is that they say, let's make a move. This place, we can't stay. God, even God hates people staying in one place. God spoke to them. He said, you have moved around this mountain for so long. You need to move. You have stayed here. You need to do something about it. This lack has stayed. This situation has stayed. You need to move. Tell your neighbor, going, move, move. Tell your neighbor, move. It starts from the mind. Did you see in it? It starts from their thought. It starts from the perception. They began to speak to themselves, we need to move. Your success starts from the mind. Your failure starts from the mind. If you are here, you have settled in your mind that it will never work. You need to change it. The breakthrough and the deliverance begins from that point. That is possible. Is doable. I can do it. It don't matter if anybody has done it before. You could be the first. These guys have no advantage. So even Paul as we are going, but let's go. But let's not let the story end like this. Let's take a step. I remember when we were going through those things, I told myself, the story must end a different way. Oh, I was determined. I told my wife one day, I said, instead I will go back to the village and join my uncles. 